Good morning. Um, if you're a guest here today, welcome. My name is Jane Mount. When Pastor Rob is gone, we traditionally have our mission partner share faith story. It helps us get to know one another a little bit better. And it also, um, and I think my favorite thing is to see how God works in people's lives in very different ways. I was born and raised in a small town in Indiana, a little bit bigger than Black Earth, uh, a town where you knew everybody and you're related to most of the people. When, when you introduced yourself, though, my favorite part, um, when I would introduce myself to people, they'd say, who's your daddy? Because they wanted to know how you know, they knew people in your family and how you were related. In fact, that's rumored to be how people from Indiana got that label, Hoosier. It's Hoosier Daddy. <laughs> I grew up in uh, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. And it's, uh, um, it always strikes me after Christmas that you know, we never talked about angels other than at Christmas time. And we've talked of, about Mary seeing an angel and about Joseph seeing an angel in his dream and the shepherds seeing an angel. Uh, but that's something that was always kind of confined to Christmas. And it wasn't until I was an adult, in fact, I had my own children, when I read the passage in Hebrews about being hospitable to strangers because you never know when you're entertaining angels unaware. I didn't have a gentle childhood, uh, but I will say that even as a small child, I had a sense that God had me. Not that I was special, um, never special, and certainly um, not set apart in any way, but just through the chaos and, and things that happened around me that he had me, uh, that I wasn't alone. I would describe that as an adult um, as it, I relate to that verse a lot, the one in Romans that says uh, nothing separates us from God. So it's that, that peace that nothing can separate us from that kind of love. When I was a teenager, I worked in my cousin's drugstore downtown. I loved it. This won't surprise you. I loved it because I got to meet all kinds of people and <laughs> I got to chat with them and find out that somebody had worked with my grandpa on his farm, or somebody knew my Uncle Don or my cousin Butch. And, but I'll never forget a Sunday morning that I was working. It was, a, it was a particularly difficult morning at home, so it was wonderful to be at work. And Sunday mornings were always quiet in the drugstore. Well, a woman came in. I didn't recognize her. And she, she went to the card section, and she picked out a greeting card and came to the front. Um, I wasn't chatty that day, and, but I was polite, and, and I sold her the card, and I handed her the bag. She turned to walk away, and she turned back to me, and she said, I hope every day of your life someone tells you that you're beautiful, because you really are. Now, I hadn't had words like that spoken to me forever. But I knew she wasn't talking about my face or what I was wearing. I didn't respond to her because I honestly just, I was kind of dumbfounded and letting it sink in. As she started to walk out the door, the thing that struck me was that I had just met an angel. And I ran out the door because I just wanted to see her again. The street was empty. The Sidewalks were empty. There were no cars. I ran into the news agency next door because that was the only other place that was open. She wasn't in there. She just vanished. I never saw her again. I was last week reading a, a story that Frederick Beekner had written. He's a famous theologian. He had been sitting on the side of a road uh, in his car just so distraught because his child had just been diagnosed with some horrible disease. A car drove by, and on that license plate of that car, just one word, and it said, trust. He said for him it was a holy moment. He didn't know whose car it was or anything about the driver, 
but for him, he got that word that he needed that day. Later, when his story was published, the owner of the car wrote him and said, yeah, I'm a trust officer at a bank. <laughs> but it didn't matter. And it doesn't matter whether that day in the drugstore that if I encountered a real angel or if it was just a, a nice lady who saw pain in a teenager's eyes. I got the words that I needed that day and words that sustained me these 40 years later. Words that told me that no matter how ugly I felt about myself, no matter what was going on, what kind of brokenness was going on in my life, that God believed that I was beautiful, that I was his masterpiece. And when I really let that sink in for me, it freed me. It freed me to love other people, the way we're taught to love other people, the way we're asked to love other people. Now, throughout my life, um, I've met lots of angels, more in human form, <laughs> but angels like you who love me and forgive me every day, and I am so grateful. It's so grateful. I'm so grateful to just be reminded of God's love all the time, and I'm grateful for the people that God surrounds me with and the places that he brings me. The New Heights in this community is one of those places, and Brecken is one of those people. <laughs> I feel so blessed um, to have met that angel and to have met the people that I have throughout my lifetime, and I thank you. Let's pray. Oh Lord, thank you for this beautiful day and a day that we can worship you. I pray, Lord, that we all remember that we are your masterpiece. No matter what goes on, no matter how we feel about ourselves, that you love us unconditionally, that to you we are beautiful, always. Lord, I ask that you help us really let that sink in so that we can live into who we are, so that we can be your hands and feet in this world and love others as you love us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.